and wikialtrightnovelist.com. I keep coming back to the incel thing, and it's still, I guess, a hot topic, and it's still uh, bothersome and irksome to me whenever I see this kind of widespread misrepresentation and unjust uh, and sanctimonious expression of of uh, hatred and contempt and this kind of mob mentality take over. It's uh, it always uh, hits me hard. And what I see happening right now with the incel community uh, and the way in which they are being shat upon by all uh, uh, supposedly respectable sources, basically, and how it's respectable now to uh, to mock them and to uh, uh, to pile on in one way or another. It's uh, it's very it's very irksome to me. You know, even though I, like I said, I have my my own differences with incels and with the incel perspective on life and uh, that I've explained earlier. You can see my earlier videos where I talk about that. Um, so this is, you know, a story that will be out of the news before you know it. In another week or so, nobody will be talking about incels to this extent anymore. And this is why I, I this is my dislike of topicality, which I've talked about before as well. People who have heard me uh, over a, a long enough span of time know my take on topical things and how everybody treats something that's topical right now as if it's the end of the world and as if things will never change and you know we'll never move on to something else and then four weeks from now it's like what's what's that we're now we're talking about this uh, and you know it's kind of extraordinary how how that all unfolds you know whether it's accidental whether it's contrived some combination of the two which is what I suspect it's a uh, it's a pretty remarkable thing to remark, <laughs> not to be redundant here. To, it's an interesting thing to see happening over and over and over again. Um, it makes you keep reflecting on how uh, these things are really ephemeral, even though they seem very much like they're never going to go away. But I, I uh, had a chance to get a little bit more meditative on the incel issue and specifically on the subject of now it's okay for you know people in all of the uh, the respectable organs of the media the mainstream media for the tradition you know the, the, the general neoliberal types and of course the feminist types and and all the other types that I so know and so love uh, that are out there that are part of the mainstream, not part of mainstream culture, but part of the mainstream media, certainly. And they're, they're always the people that we hear from as if their positions, their opinions are, are normative uh, somehow, or we sh we're supposed to accept them as normative and see them as normative when in fact they aren't, uh, but they are normative of our rulers, they're normative of the elites and what they, the, the ideas and opinions that they want us to accept as normative. So in that sense, they are, they could be said to be normative. Um, and reflecting on it a little bit, you know, that now, you know, you see feminists making glib remarks about incels and how they should just kill themselves and you know this this lady I don't even know who she is some some woman online this Kung Pao lady <laughs> Kung Pao Kim uh, whom I, I'm told has had some history of saying outrageous things online but but is very much in the mainstream of feminism today uh, just your standard left-leaning neoliberal uh, type of person. She says something, you know, to CEOs out there basically saying, and I'll find the link if, to this if I can, it made a big impression on me. She sends a tweet saying, 
hey CEOs, you've, you've probably got incels working for you. Are you gonna do something about this? Basically, basically inferring that incels should be fired because uh, if you're an incel, you're just going to, you know, kill a bunch of people uh, because you have this, this uh, vicious hatred of women that is completely unjustified and, and uh, doesn't have anything to do with your experiences whatsoever. And whatever frustrations you might have are your own damn fault. Uh, you know, interesting how they don't, they don't take this perspective with uh, the, the kind of groups that they tend to set up on pedestals. You know, the, they don't, they don't tell us to feel this way about, you know, some migrant coming to the West illegally, you know, uh, who has committed crimes that they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't say, oh, well, he's responsible for what he's done. I mean, their, their hypocrisies are manifold. I don't need to go into that right now. It's, it's obvious for anybody who's got eyes to see and ears to hear and, you know, half a brain to comprehend it with. They're, their hypocrisy, their, their consistent inconsistency, how the incel group is just not to, you're not supposed to try to understand them at all. You're just supposed to see them as bad and to see whatever, anytime anybody identifies as, in, as an incel, they, it, it must be entirely their fault that they got to be this way. And they must be uh, another Alec Manassian in the making. That's how we're taught to see the incel type. Whereas, you know, of course, anyone, somebody named Mohammed from the Middle East migrating to the West, we're, we're sternly told, oh, don't, don't you dare think that that person is potentially another, another uh, member of ISIS uh, or something like that. You know, just to take one example. Nothing against people named Mohammed from the Middle East, by the way. And I don't think that the, uh, I don't think that our rulers, uh, our smug elites, I, I don't think that their fetishization of the Mohammeds of the world are due to any love that they have for Mohammed. I think it's just part of, you know, uh, for, for the more mediocre, medi mediocrely placed among them is just sort of the standard prejudice that they have to, uh, to be xenophilic, but, but hateful of straight white males from the West whether they're the deplorable working male, working man type, or these incels who are taken to be all straight white males, uh, even though Alec Manassian was not white and uh, Elliot Roger was not white, uh, or he was half white. He was, he was uh, part Asian and, and uh, Alec Manassian uh, is from the Middle East. He's Armenian. Still, they're, they're supposed to be representative of this terrible class of people that we're just supposed to hate and deplore and despise. And it's good, you're virtuous if you despise them. But, and, and, on, on, and on and on it goes, and it's okay for you to, to basically tell people that, that they should be rooted out and deprived of their ability to take care of themselves, uh, you know, deprived of their livelihoods, it's okay to tell CEOs to fire them, basically, um, and so forth and so on, to just dehumanize this this entire group, which is a group that basically has it rough already. This is a, these are men who are socially on the bottom of uh, the totem pole, who already eat a lot of shit daily, whether or not they contribute to that with their attitude about things. I mean, that's something that, that you could, that's a point that's legitimate to make, um, you know, whether they are legitimate in defining themselves as incels and continuing to persist in certain ways of dealing with their situation. You know, I've had my own, I have my own take on that, which I've expressed before, but that's not the issue here. Um, like I was saying a moment ago, the issue is how they are just basically treated as reprobates out of hand um, by these loathsome, contemptible uh, neoliberal elite types uh, like Ms. Ms. Kung Pao and her, her feminist compatriots. So anyway, what, what struck me when I started to think about all of this in a more 
meditative light and got out of just my anger about, about it all. And my anger probably is informed in some way by the fact that I can relate in some manner, some motor manner to the incels, being a low status male myself, although I've never called myself an incel and I don't see things the same way that they do. I, I certainly would call them allies in the same way that I would call MGTOW allies, although I don't define myself as a MGTOW either or identify as a MGTOW either. But the strange thing is you have this, this peculiar situation where you have just to stick with the terminology that's used by the incels. You have the incels who are taunted by the chads, picked on by the chads, the, the, the guys that they see as the chads, the high status men, the alpha guys uh, who are good looking and socially desired. They get picked on by the chads and they get rejected and scornfully treated by the, the girls they call the Stacys. These are the socially desirable girls who want to be with the chads, but who, but who see them as gross and creepy, see the incels as gross and creepy for having, you know, uh, sexual desire because, you know, it's just like that there's just some, it, it, that they act as if these guys having, uh, uh, having a desire for sex is just an affront against them uh, somehow. The fact that they could be desired by somebody that they look down on so much uh, just gets them thought of as creepy by the by these uh, type of Stacy girls. Again, sticking with the terminology here. I know Chad, Stacy's incels. I know these are all terms that are used for you know, uh, and that uh, we don't all fit into these these categories. And we 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 maybe you know there's. Not everything is so starkly rendered, so black and white, as a lot of the incels talk about them being. But just to stick with the terminology, for now, because they, these, these terms do correspond to certain types of people, even if you know not all pretty girls are mean and awful, and not all good-looking, high-status guys are, you know, dicks and uh, abusive and sadistic and and mean uh, to to the nerds. Just, just sticking with these terms right now for argument's sake. What's interesting and what I, I don't really know the answer to, I don't really have uh, an explanation for, looking at all of these things more meditatively, again, getting past the, the anger that I have about the current state of things, looking at it logically, it's, it's weird and interesting and even fascinating that the feminists and the other type of mainstream liberals, uh, mainstream lefties or neoliberals, uh, the college professor types, it's fascinating that these types of people would side with the Chads and the Stacys against the incels. Why do I say that? Well. When you think of your typical Chad or your typical Stacy, we're talking about somebody who's, uh, you know, popular, who's well, uh, uh, well adjusted, um, you know, who's not uh, the not the sort of person who would uh, uh, embrace the kind of things that the feminists would embrace not the sort of person who would take the kind of position that the, that the feminists and their ilk would, would take on things. I would, I would think that the, the Chads and the Stacys would be generally white, generally uh, middle American, probably mostly conservative in their political views, probably largely Trump supporters. You know, if we're talking about the kind of college frat types, type of guys, uh, and you know, um, whether they're the wealthy type of chads, that would be, a, you know, the Duke University uh, uh, lac lacrosse player type, uh, you know, just to, to cite something from a few years ago, the, the Duke lacrosse 
rape case that fell apart uh, that all the all the lefties were egging on because they hated the in that case in this case they hated all the chads they hated the chads who were being accused they were the type of person that the lefties hated so that was the reason why they continued to side against them even though the evidence clearly showed that uh, there wasn't a case but anyway in 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 cases like that, in other cases, uh, similar cases, the chads would be hated by the feminists. I mean, that the chads would be toxically masculine. They'd be toxic masculinity, personified or manified. <laughs> Let's just get gendered with our with our terminology here. Um, using the term gendered, ironically, of course, it's not a term that I use, as you must must well know. Uh, and also, they, they they decided with the Stacys. Now, the Stacys would be the kind of the kind of girls that the feminists would hate, the Barbie girl types, the sorority girl types, you know, the the ones who would who would wanna uh, who uh, who wouldn't wanna uh, hate on men, who would love men, who would who would uh, you know wanna get married and and. Uh, be taken care of by a Chad who makes six figures and, you know, uh, live the party life and uh, be a wine mom and all, all that kind of thing. Live in the suburbs. These are these are the sort that the the, uh, the feminists would typically hate on, and they, these would the, be the type of women who would not not have much of a use for feminism, who would see, uh, who would look down on the feminists as uh, as a bunch of weirdos. And yet, in this case, this the uh, the people that the, the feminist types that, that uh, the Stacy types would look down on as a bunch of weirdos, and the Chad types who would who would also not be uh, not be on the feminist side, uh, culturally speaking, politically speaking, in really any way that, that one can think of. In this case, however, the feminists are siding with the Chads and the Stacys in hating the incels. Now the Chads and the Stacys are are uh, are scornful of the incels because they're they're just dorks and and uh, nerds and freaks and that kind of thing. Again, speaking broadly here. I know that that uh, you know, things are more complex than that. And I'm not saying everybody fits into these neat little categories. But speaking broadly, the Chads and the Stacys hate on the incels because the incels are, are weird and freaky. The feminists, who would be thought of as weird and freaky by the jocks and the cheerleader types, the sorority girl types, uh, they uh, are joining the Chads and the Stacys in hating on the incels. So everybody's hating on the incels together. And the feminists are siding with the Chads and the Stacys, the, the popular middle American Trump voting types, against the incels. What is going on? Why is this happening? Is it just the fact that the incels are men and they're masculine, uh, they have masculine desires and these masculine desires make them loathsome to, uh, to the feminists and therefore they have to be kicked around uh, and um, you know, slandered and slurred uh, rather than sympathized with, rather than you know, in any way uh, seen as, as common, having, sharing a common humanity and, and asking, you know, what happened to you, what, who put you down, who, who abused you, why did you become this way? And instead of that, you immediately uh, go into this uh, being scornful of them and mocking them and despising them in the same way that the Chads and the Stacys do. The Chads and the Stacys, who the feminist types and the other the other uh, factions of those who rule us, uh, they would also tend to be critical of in most other contexts. You know, why is that happening? I, I guess I'm not totally sure, but it's fascinating to, th to see this dynamic playing itself out. And I guess I'm interested in hearing if anyone has any opinions about this, if anyone has any thoughts. Be very interested to hear what, uh, what y'all have to say, so let me know. My name's Andy Nowicki. Check out my work at altrightnovelist.com. Thank you for watching.